at the world around us. Things today are very different than they were, say, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago. The surface of the Earth is constantly changing, and it's being driven by scientific processes like weathering, erosion, and deposition. Today, we are going to investigate how these processes work within the context of a river system. In order to think about weathering, erosion, and deposition in a river system, it's important that we understand the different parts of a river. The beginning of a river is called the headwaters. Headwaters may form due to snowmelt from a mountain, due to an underwater spring breaking through the surface, or as in the case of our Ohio River, where two different rivers conjoin together to form a single river. As we move down these meander curves, what we will learn is that this curvy river creates two different sides of the river, two different banks that we can call the cut bank and the point bar. The reason for these different names is because water behaves differently depending upon which side of the river we're on. In a meander curve, if we look at the curve from the perspective of an upside down U shape, we can see that the cut bank is always at the top of the U and the point bar is on the inside of the U. As you move into the next curve, it looks like it flip flops. But again, if we keep the perspective of the upside down U, the cut bank is the top and the point bar is on the inside. As we continue to the end of our river, well, the river end is called the mouth. As water flows through the river system, it will touch the cut banks and the point bars as it flows. Do you guys see the soil being carried in the water? That is erosion. Erosion carries the sediment. Now our cut bank is the farthest distance that this water has to travel around this curve. So the water has to move faster and with more energy to hit that cut bank. However, our point bar side, this is the shortest distance the water has to travel. So it's a little bit slower moving on that side, causing less erosion. At the mouth of the river, we can see deposition. You can see where as some of the water goes down the drain, it's dropping some of the sediment as that water spreads out and slows down. Faster moving water, more energy equals more erosion. Slower, less energy water is not going to cause as much erosion. For anyone who has gone down to the stream or creek to play or fish or relax, you maybe notice that along the banks of our streams and rivers, we often will see large rocks or boulders and a lot of vegetation planted. Now this growing vegetation in these large boulders actually help to slow down the naturally occurring erosion. The weight of the stones hold soil in place and the roots of the plant are anchoring the plant by holding the soil and also absorbing some of the water out of the system. So while erosion and deposition naturally occur in our streams and rivers, the rate or how quickly that happens varies based on the landscape of that river system. I want us to take a moment to observe how much erosion we are seeing in our stream in a natural state. Now let's compare this to what happens when human activities change the landscape. In the year 1803, Ohio became a state. And as Ohio became a state, more and more people started to live in the area. 
Now, in order to live along the river, we had to build buildings, houses, we maybe cleared farm fields. And so to settle the area, we had to clear out a lot of the vegetation. Now remember, we said the plant roots help to hold soil in place. So let's see if there is an effect on how much erosion we see with landscape changes. But also keep in mind how much pavement we see in the world today. Roads, sidewalks, parking lots. All of this pavement is impermeable, meaning water cannot soak into it. So today, more and more rainwater is getting funneled down our storm drains from our streets and out into our local streams and rivers. So we now experience a higher volume and faster moving water coming into the river combined with a loss of some natural erosion. So let's see how much erosion we now can see with these changes. Pay attention to those cut banks and point bars and also see how much deposition results from this increased erosion. If we look at our river, it's had some changes. We can notice that our river is now wider. From bank to bank, we have a wider width because of the natural erosion off of the banks themselves. But we also might notice that the river is more shallow in depth. Now we can no longer see the stream table through the bottom of the river because we've had deposition occurring or dropping of sediment all along the way. So erosion picks up and takes the sediment and deposition drops it. And while it drops it along the river, and we can see that here in the bed, we also can see quite a bit of deposition at the mouth of the river. This constructs a landform called a river delta. The rate of deposition is quite evident in the formation of this large delta landform constructed by deposition of sediment that's dropped here at the mouth of the river. An important reason to study river systems and erosion and deposition in a river system is because rivers are important to our society. Not only does our local Ohio River provide drinking water for many people, but we build and commute and travel across rivers. If we didn't understand, say, how erosion works, think about this bridge on our demonstration table. Do you see the falling sediment on either side? What's going to happen to this bridge eventually as the banks underneath it continue to get eroded away? That's right, it could fall into the river and this would be a big safety concern in real life. So engineers have to understand this erosion and deposition process to be able to construct sound bridges over our river systems. Through erosion and deposition, rivers change the course they flow as well. If we look at A as the original river, well, the impact of the water, that red line traveling through the river, is showing where erosion is occurring, especially concentrated on those cut banks where the water is moving faster with more energy. And as it creates more and more erosion, eventually it erodes a new path to where the old meander curve breaks from the original river path and now it's created a new special kind of lake called an oxbow lake. These oxbow lakes are our evidence that rivers change course over time. If we look at this river, it's what looks like the yellow ribbon crossing the landscape, we can see these different oxbow lakes that were left by the old meander curves, the old paths 
that the river took. Here is an example of the river changing course. Over time, the river eroded this straight channel that we see on the left. However, in the old meander curve that we see here, there is still some water. And this is now that oxbow lake. River systems are fascinating. And because we still rely on rivers today, for water needs and transportation needs, it's critical that we understand the natural processes that affect the river so that we can be the best stewards possible and utilize this resource without accidentally causing harm to it. So remember students, when we think about the changing surface of the earth, weathering breaks it, erosion takes it, and deposition drops it.